Welcome to this session. In this session, we'll be talking about the graphical representations. In the graphical representations, we would be discussing zero dimension, one dimension, two, and three dimensional pictures. Then we would be discussing some graphical representations which are dedicated to the field of geography, like climograph, hethergraph, echograph, and uh, cartograms. So let's start with why do we need and what is the basic reason that we need to understand the concept of uh, what we call as statistical diagrams. So what are statistical diagrams and why do we need to understand them? So statistical diagrams are any diagrams which are drawn uh, in the manner of visual representation. So visual and graphical representation makes the things much more easier. So there are four primary benefits of any statistical diagrams. First is completeness. It gives the complete information about something. It should be consistent. There should not be a huge lot of variation. It should be accurate. And finally, it should be homogeneous or have similar information. These are the four major components or reasons why we understand any statistical diagram. So let's start with the first way of understanding the statistical diagram that is zero dimension. Now what is zero dimension? This is something students really hear of. Now before we start the concept of zero and one and two, three dimensions, let's understand what are dimensions. So this is the x-axis I should say and this is the y-axis. So anything which is related between x-axis and y-axis is two-dimensional. Anything which depicts single axis is one-dimensional and anything which represents three x-axis, x, y, and z would be three-dimensional. So zero-dimensional is any point which we can just mark or plot on an x-y plane. So for example, this point is eight and four. So eight here and four here. So that's a kind of zero dimension. Now the next thing we would be understanding is one dimension. Now first we start with line diagram. So what is line diagram? If I'm talking of production in terms of production of iron ore uh, during the years 1990, 1995, 2000 and so on. So if I say the production was 20 million tons it increased to 25 million tons and this year it was 22 million tons. So this is what I can depict by means of line, di uh, line diagram. It's the most simplest form. The next complicated form or a bit understandable form is line graph. If I want to understand the same feature by line graph, what I will do is, supposedly this is the line for 20 and this is for 25. I'll start from here, this 20 and 25 and then 22. So the line graph would somewhere go in this fashion. So this is line graph. Now if I want to understand polygraph, it would be, for example, this is the time uh, it takes me to walk and reach. This is the time taken for me to reach my bike. And this is the time taken by me to reach my train, for example. So this is a polygraph. So this explains walking. This explains the time by bike and this explains the time by train. So these are the three components that we, we can understand. Or line graph was the first one and this would be known as polygraph. <coughs> now, the next concept we would be talking here is after polygraph, there can be bar diagrams. What is bar diagram? Bar diagram is instead of line, I make it bar. So that is what is bar diagram. So this is I can explain as bar diagram. Now bar diagram can be of various ways. So this is a simple bar. Then I can talk about multiple bar, where this talks about production and this talks about reserves. This is production and this is the reserve left for I don't know. This is the production and this is the reserve. So this is a kind of multiple bar graph. The next is component bar graph. 
Component bar graph talks about the components of bar. For example, this is the bar diagram. And this. So this shows, for example, profit. This shows my expense. And this shows my cost of production. So that is what is a component bar graph. Now, we will be discussing some uh, really known forms. So that would be broken bar. What is bro broken bar graph? If I am talking about var variables which are highly deviant, so this is 30, this is 50. Now I want to represent 400 on this graph. Okay. So if I want to draw 400, it would go somewhere above. So what I do is I use bo broken graphs. So I broke the line here, I broke the line here, and then I joined it again, and I mentioned 400. So this is the way we do broken graph. Then there can be deviation graphs, deviation bars. What is deviation bar? I can have a data up, and then down, then production, and then reserves. So this explains pro, uh, reserve, for example, and this explains production. Then there can be geodirectional. It's similar to deviational bar graph. There is a big difference between geodirectional. In geodirectional, you have both the things on the same section. So this is reserve and this is production, for example. This is reserve and this is production. So this is what is geodirectional. Now next we talk about some rare, very rarely known as a star diagram. What is a star diagram? You have the dimensions, uh, directions north, south, east and west. And based on the direction, what you try to do is, you try to plot the diagram. So this is this, 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 and this. So we can plot it on the graph by means of a star diagram. Then you have a scatter plot, which is mainly used in regressional analysis. So you have x and y axis. I don't do anything. I just mark the points. And based on the majority of the points, there is a line, which is called as regression line sometimes. So this is used in regression and correlation. The next is population pyramids. So what do we understand by population pyramids? Population pyramids, you have multiple information. So this is the age groups. This is the male. This is the female. So female number of females in this age group, then the age group increases, number of females decreases, number of males are more than females in this age group. So this is how we do a population pyramid. This is again a one dimensional. Now we'll move on to two more dimensional. What are the basic two dimensional pictures? Two dimensionals are very simple. So two dimensional considers two dimensions, x and y axis. So you have, uh, for example, a small rectangle and a big rectangle. So this would be production in 1970s and this would be production in 2010s. So you are, you are talking about production values, supposedly 50, and this is nearly double the size, so I say 100 million tons. So this is two-dimensional by means of rectangular diagrams. The next is square diagrams. You have this square and a bigger square. So this is 50, this is 100. Similar thing, just you are changing the shape out of it. The next is blocks, box plot. So box plot, for example, this is the speed of light. And this is the real speed or the true speed. What you are trying to do is you are trying to draw a box plot. So in box plot, what you would be doing is you would be understanding the concepts. Yeah. So this is what is box plot. It is also known as whisker diagram. Whisker diagram. Okay. The final and the most important in two-dimensional is the pie graph. So this is an explanation for the pie graph. Uh, for example, this is 60 degrees. So what would be the percentage value in pi graph? So it's the component by the total value 360 into 100. So it's 1 by 6 into 100. So that is 100 by 6 percentage of the 
total region is what is this section of the pi diagram. These are the basic two dimensional figures we have talked about. Now let's move on to three dimensional. Three dimensional figures are rarely talked about and they are not that common. So the first is cube diagrams. So I have one cube. This is one cube and then I have a bigger cube out here. So these are the two cubes I'm going to compare. Now how will I draw it? For example, the value here is 125 and it's 131, 1331. So I'll take the cube root for both. This is 5, this is 11. So this would be 11 by 5, that's 2.2. That means this cube is more than double the size of this cube. So by this means we can find out the uh, cube diagrams and their relative size. The next important here is pictograms. What are pictograms? Pictograms is basically drawing the figures. So I'm drawing one car here, the other car here that shows the production of cars in 2000 and now I want to show the production of cars in 2010. So I can say the production of cars in 2000 was 2 millions and this has increased to 4 millions in 2010. So this is 2000 value and this is 2010 value. So by this means I can depict the pictures and make an analysis. Now let's move on to some things which are very unique to the field of geography. The first one here is climograph. What is climograph? Climograph is finding the climate of any region. So it's basically formed by two methods. You have a bar graph for each month, January, uh, sorry, January to December. And then you have a line graph which shows the temperature. So this shows the uh, your rainfall, the bar diagram, and the line diagram shows the temperature. So that is the way of representation of climograph, it was given by Taylor. There are four major parameters that you study under climograph. That is raw, scorching, keen, and muggy. Raw means you have low temperature and low relative humidity. Then you have scorching, you have low humidity. Yeah, low relative humidity and high temperature. Then you have high temperature with high humidity. You have low relative humidity, uh, sorry, high relative humidity with low temperature. Both are low here. Okay, so these are the four basic types of climograph that we understand here. Now there are a few more terms that we need to understand. I'll just do a switch of slides here. So here is the next slide that will help you understand. So the first diagram here, uh, we can understand here, this is the, what is we call as climograph, what we understood right now. Now let's move on to the further concepts. So the next here is ether graph. So this is a diagram which shows ether graph. What is ether graph? Ether graph is any graph that shows the relationship between climatic regions and the cultivation. So it's basically a 12 sided figure. You start with the January here and you end with December here and you show what is mean monthly precipitation and mean monthly temperature. So it's basically precipitation versus temperature graph shown for various seasons in an enclosed 12 dimensional uh, 12, uh, 12 sided diagram. The next is ergograph. I don't have a diagram here for ergograph, but what is ergograph will explain. Ergograph is basically understanding of relationship between three parameters. You have crop, climate and season. So these are the three parameters that you try to understand for ergograph. 
In Argo Cloud, what we try to do is this was given by Giddies and Oglib. We basically try to find out relationship between human act and the climate or the seasonal behavior. The next important concept we will be talking about is cartogram. So here is all about cartogram. So all these diagrams deal about cartogram. We'll understand one by one. So first we start with what is cartogram. So cartogram is any thematic mapping or any basically mapping of a variable which is replaced by a land area or a distance. So first is the area cartogram. This is the area cartogram. Here what you can see is you have value by area. So you have this area, this much value, and you have the code here which shows the value for each area. Now the shape and the relative location of each area and each nation is preserved in this case. So what is preserved in area cartogram is the shape and the relative location. Okay. Now we will talk about further parameters. The next is non-contiguous and contiguous data. Non-contiguous data means which is not connected. So for example, as you can see here, these are the parameters which are not connected. So this is what is known as the non-contiguous diagram. Okay. Non-contiguous diagram can be in two form, non-overlapping and overlapping. As you can see here, if I zoom it out, as you can see it here this is overlapping so you have regions which are overlapping so this region is overlapping okay so these are the regions those are overlapping so that is one form of non contiguous data and this as you can see all the data is separate so all the areas are separated. There are separate boundaries. So that is non-overlap and this is overlapping region. So these are the two forms of non-contiguous data. In this non-contiguous data, you have different form here below. This is a contiguous form of data. Now what is the difference between a contiguous form of data Contiguous form of data is basically you are maintaining the topology, but it causes distortion in shape. Because you are continuously showing the data, it is distorted. The other forms of cartograms that we will talk about is, the most popular is dolling. In dolling, what you do is, you show it by means of circles. So in this, what happens is the figures which are which have the shortest distance, uh, basically, uh, they form the true location centers. Okay. The next is dermers. Dermers, and MS you show it by the square shape. So there are less gaps. You do not find gaps. You can find gaps here. So this is a gap, this is a gap, but no such gap exists in square shape because of the shape. So there are less gaps in a square form. Because of the less gaps, there is loose distance and that helps to preserve contiguity between the various figures. So that is what is Zermer's diagram. And finally, this is the graduated diagram. In graduated diagram, what you do, you draw the main area. For example, all these are the maps of California. So you draw the map of California and on the map of California you try to draw the various regions by means of a square. So based on the density of that region you draw the size of the square big or small. So that is one way, that is a graduated diagram. So graduated cartogram, Dermer's cartogram, Dolling cartogram, then you have overlap and non-overlap cartograms in non-contiguous cartograms, then you have the contiguous cartograms and the finally is the isogonic or the distance cartogram. What is meant by isogonic or the distance cartogram? Basically what you try to do is you try to reveal the travel time and distance. Uh, sorry, and the direction. So this is what is depicted by the isogonic or the distance uh, cartogram. In this cartogram you try to depict the travel time and the direction from the vertices in any of the travel networks. 
So this was what we studied today. In the next class, we will be talking more about the various statistical techniques. Hope, the, hope you enjoyed this session. Stay tuned for more lectures on geography. Have a good day ahead.